Hi, my name is John Sulik, and today I'm going to share with you my research design for analyzing conflict in Darfur. Um, so here's a brief outline of what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I can use GIS and a data set that I got from the Humanitarian Information Unit that shows the locations of conflict events. Um, what I do with the GIS is I just take a bunch of different spatial layers and I, uh, I calculate the distance from each of these environmental features um, or the density of them, like road networks, to each observation, to each village. So there are approximately 8,000 villages. So every village is going to have these uh, metrics associated with it. Um, so these are natural environment factors that I take. I mapped conflict on top of. Green would be places that aren't attacked. Reds are places that are, have been attacked. And what you can do when you bring these layers together is you can associate like the settlement density, how densely packed your village is together. You can associate the density in the area that the village falls on to that area and assign it an attribute. And these attributes you use, you feed them into a statistical model. Um, so you can take things like road networks. What are different things you think might be influencing the conflict? Is it uh, easy access to villages via road networks? You can calculate road network density, enter that as a factor, a variable. Um, so here I've overlaid the conflict events in red on a road density. This is road density. And so again, you can assign the value of road density to each village. Each village will have many attributes that are based on these environmental factors. Uh, something interesting also is rainfall. So how is rainfall having an effect on the conflict, the spatial distribution of whether villages are attacked or aren't attacked? Um, so again, you just take w the, the land that the village falls on and you link it with that. So you can do categorical variables like land cover or the quantitative ones like the distance and density measurements. And uh, so here, if you've got land cover and you know villages have been attacked or not attacked, you can cross-tabulate them like the table I showed. Um, and then with GIS, you can buffer all the villages that have, these are the villages that haven't been attacked. You can buffer them and just examine the land cover that uh, they're associated with. Or you can do the ones that uh, have been damaged and destroyed too. And then what you can do is you can calculate metrics to describe, um, like for agricultural land, what's the total area of agricultural land for no damaged villages or for damaged villages? Um, how many different types of landscape occur? Uh, how many land cover types? Um, you can calculate land cover metrics, landscape metrics that uh, describe how fragmented the landscape is overall, things like patch density, edge density. And again, um, what you can do is you can put a buffer around each village, and then that buffer represents the total landscape around each village. And then what you do is you calculate these metrics that I showed you for each village. So as you can see, each village has a, it might fall directly on top of grassland, like the green area, but it could be right next to woody vegetation. So these landscape metrics account for the variation in uh, land cover around each village. Um, and what you can do is you can take all of these factors and enter them into a logistic regression model to show you the strength of the relationship between these different environmental features, whether they be human-induced, like settlement density, abiotic factors like elevation, or just the distance to a water course. Um, also, you could do what's called a geographically weighted regression, where you actually run a separate regression for each observation point. So you can run 8,000 different regressions based on the area around each village. And what's handy about this is that you actually get a range of uh, coefficients that show you the strength of the relationship between that factor and the occurrence or non-occurrence of conflict. And the handy thing about geographically weighted regression uh, is that you can map the output of your analysis. So you can actually see how much of an effect is settlement density having on the occurrence of conflict and where is it having that effect. Is it a positive or is it a negative relationship? Um, you can also map things like distance to nearest wadi, the seasonal water course. How much of an effect is that having, and where is it having that effect? Um, you can also map the landscape indis indices. So are areas that are becoming increasingly fragmented, are those the ones that are more susceptible to conflict or not? So this is just a very detailed way to associate quantitatively the occurrence or non-occurrence of conflict with these, uh, these environmental factors. Thanks.